I was 17 when I told my best friend that sexual assault is illegitimate. Yeah, I remember sitting in the passenger seat of his car, looking him square in the face, as I basically proudly announced to him that something like that could never happen to someone like me. I remember ignorantly giggling at the thought that someone would be so cruel as to take the pants off of someone when they were unconscious or to continue touching someone after they had already said no. My name is Sienna, and I was 20 when it happened to me. Silence, by definition, is the complete absence of sound. Silence is me shaking my head no to another round when his friends asked and being coerced into it anyway. Silence is the cab ride home, unable to turn my thoughts into words, my mind going black, my mouth going numb. Silence is my unconscious body lying on that bed that night. But silence is more than that, more than just the absence of sound. Silence, or the act of silencing, is a weapon. Silence is isolation, loneliness, the inability to tell your story, the inability to heal after something has happened. Silence is me sitting with what happened, unable to even say the word out loud. Rape. It's uncomfortable, it's violent, it's scary. And my name is Jade. And this, this wasn't, wasn't supposed, supposed to happen to me. And it should never happen to anyone. But the truth is, it did happen, and it continues to happen. Today we know that one in five women will be sexually assaulted while in college, and 88% of these survivors will never tell their story. Because as Jade alluded to, saying the word rape aloud, sharing our stories, it's uncomfortable and it's scary. But that's why Not Silent Because exists. It exists to challenge the stigma of silence on college campuses. Not Signed Because is a student-led educational program that informs and educates Boise State student about, students about sexual assault and the importance of consent by empowering them to become active bystanders and allies on our campus in order to create a safer campus environment. It is bound in the stories of individuals who have transformed their hurt into healing, have relearned strength and worth after it was stolen from them, and in, to all those people who have refused to remain silent, they are the reason why Not Silent Because exists, to challenge the stigma of sexual assault on college campuses just like our own. From its first beginnings, when CNN and I first began unpacking our own lived experiences and deciding to turn them into action, Not Silent Because has been a largely uphill battle. The video that you all saw tonight began collaboration. <laughs> with our videographer, uh, who is actually here tonight, Alec Merlino, and it grew into something much bigger. It, inquired, or it required hundreds of students and hundreds of hours of work to make it possible, and today it is the reason, the campaign is the reason why, or <laughs> for the work that Jade and I do, and we live and breathe every day. Having grown up in Boise, I could think of no better place than the blue turf to share what we had created. I knew that if we could get our video on the big screen at the last home fo football game of the season, that our stories would be heard, they would be seen, and they would be felt. But as it turned out, this was going to be a little bit harder than we originally anticipated because Boise State is a public university, which means they designate free speech spaces all over campus for students like us to share our voices. But the Jumbotron was not one of those spaces. It was monetized, it was privatized, and it was completely inaccessible to a student like Jade or myself. So, in the 48 hours leading up to the big premiere of our video, or what we thought was going to be the big premiere, we had all sorts of institutional red tape to cross over. But that would mean we would have to get the university to buy in. We had to get them to endorse the message in order for it to make it to the big screen. This would require them to acknowledge their students and our voices. And on November 18th, that's exactly what they did. Not Silent Because was played at the last home football game of the season as the entire student section cheered, an entire university stood behind them, and an entire community rallied behind students' lived experiences. But our work didn't stop there. By studying educational programs across the country, informed by leaders within the field, Not Silent Because inspires Boise State students to take an active role in preventing sexual assault. Thanks to our 20 student volunteers, our program has made it into classrooms, 
living and learning communities, Greek organizations, and more. And our learning experiences are just now growing. We're reaching out to different universities across the nation, including our new allies at Duke University. The video that sparked the dialogue, which launched a campaign, is on its way to becoming a lasting legacy here at Boise State. However, in order to make it so, we need our university to monetarily support us. So we have reached out to, to our campus and asked university leadership to secure the necessary funding our program needs. The only student-led program here at Boise State championing this issue. Our path to institutionalization has not been easy. It still isn't easy. But each step is a testament to the power students have when they refuse to be silent about what truly matters. Our six speakers tonight can attest to the courage, the commitment, the empathy, and the hard work it takes to empowering individuals and challenging the notion of silence. Each one of them is on their own unique path. However, they have one thing in common. They have uncovered an issue that is plaguing our campus, our community, or our society, and they're choosing to act. Action, that is what sets them apart. Tonight, we have the great privilege of introducing you to six incredible student advocates who have chosen not to be silent because issues facing international students, reframing failure, supporting undocumented immigrants and prison inmates, supporting trans healthcare and refugees truly does matter. And only is it when we share our voices that we learn that our hurt will no longer define us and begin to find allies in our experiences. Only is it when we find the courage to show up is it that we begin to relearn acceptance, compassion, love, worth, and the meaning of respect. Tonight, we take back the voices, which our voices which have been silenced far too long. We ask that you please open your hearts, open your minds to the stories that you will hear, hear, hear tonight, and please join us in welcoming our speakers. Thank you.